Do you live in the US and want fast, fresh and tasty meals without the hassle of shopping or all that hard work preparation? Well, don't you worry. As a lazy man, I've got you covered. Try America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh, and get yourself fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered direct to your door. So why not eat well, stay healthy, and avoid the cost of regular takeout by trying HelloFresh? Just click the link in the description below for a special limited time discount and free shipping as well. Enjoy. Well, two final games to go in this remarkable roller coaster of a Premier League season at Crystal Palace. We have got really the battle for seventh place in our hands at the moment. We're playing against a side battling for the top four on the final day. And there's one thing we can guarantee after what we've seen this season and in our whole tenure at Crystal Palace. It ain't going to be easy. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 90 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We're battling for seventh place for European football and with the coefficient, we might get it anyway. We've got to secure ourselves the top eight and we need a point to do it. We go away to Watford who are already relegated in our first game today and then we play at home to Arsenal who are scrapping with Chelsea for the final Champions League spot. So if you're looking forward to all of that, seeing how we get on as Guy Vaknin continues his remarkable season, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments how you think we'll get on. And if we get into Europe, the big question for you, should we move this summer? That's going to be an interesting discussion. Let me very quickly show you the games we've played off camera. So since you were last with me for Burnley and Everton, we've continued an unbeaten run with some remarkable results. A 3 all draw at home to Manchester City. An unlikely hero in Joris Mancon has had a poor first season at the club, but an 89th minute equaliser, and it's a good result against Manchester City. A 2-1 win away at Leeds to a struggle in a little bit. Guy Vaknin with both of those. Away at Newcastle, a one or draw thanks to Rodrigo Ribeiro. And a 3-0 win at home to Fulham. Two for Ribeiro again, and one for Christian Spasov. We look great, we're in good form, and to be fair, it's been a great season. You saw in the last episode, when we're on it at home to those bottom half teams, we are very hard to stop. We're getting better on the road, but this is where pressure comes. And if there's one thing this team have proven over the years, it's not hugely brilliant under pressure. So let's go and get into the Watford game. We've got a lot to get through today. The finances at the club are not good and European football could well be the saviour. But for now, this is the game of the two I'm targeting. If we win this, we're in a really good position. We're ahead of 7th place with the same number of games played. So let's go and make sure we do it. We're going to get lots of opposition instructions on. It's a Watford team that have basically swapped with us in the last year. They were in Europe. They had a good team. They sold Ocon to United for 90 million. They let half of their team go essentially. And they are a shell of themselves. They're going down to the championship. And I can't say as a Luton fan I'm devastated by that. Montero will keep his place in goal. Setford will have to wait till the summer to become first choice. Big decisions at the back, but Polito has played really well the last two games. So he stays in ahead of Tapsoba, despite him being fit again. And the same at left back with Eric Nelson, who's done nothing wrong so far. I'm looking at the rest of the side. There are opportunities for changes. So in centre midfield, it's been between Ward and Hurley. But again, I'm generally sticking with the ones who are in form. The only change I'm going to make today is Guy Vaknin back in for Lewis. He just needed a rest last time out. And Ribeiro, of course, is brilliant too. Brombach drops off the bench for Kuto. Jimmy Campbell not quite back yet. He'll be on the bench next week. But it means our 11 in full for today is Montero in goal. Rodriguez and Nelson, the fullbacks with Polito and Rodolfo a centre-half. In midfield, it's Ben Hames who's been really strong on the right. You've got Spasov on the left who's improving. Rothwell and Hurley, the two centre midfielders. And then Vaknin and Ribeiro up front. And I feel like we've actually got a bit of quality and some game changers on the bench now. So let's go and get into it and try and keep this unbeaten run going. You never know how this is going to go. Watford got relegated in their last game, but Solskjaer's come in pretty recently and they have looked better in terms of points. They've definitely picked up. They've got no pressure on them now. We've got lots. It's basically a flip scenario from what we saw two or three weeks ago where we had no pressure. Watford was scrapping for their lives. So... I wonder if that's going to affect the performances. They've got experienced players like Botman and Thomas in their team. Nico Williams, another one as well. 
But those younger replacements that have come in for Ocon and the likes, they've just not been the same level. So let's go and get through the dressing room. Let's go and carry on our last performance. We're going to stay positive. We're going to play on the front foot. We're going to try and get the result at Vicarage Road. Well, of course, as you can see, we are a late kickoff. So we know what we've got to do today as Watford play out from a goal kick. And we have been carved open there. Rodolfo recovers really well, but not the best signs. Watford, few empty seats after that relegation as Vaknin gets in on halfway to Hurley. Good ball over to Ribeiro, who's in the form of his life. Oh, that's delightful. That is delightful. Dinks it over the keeper. It wasn't a big lob. It was just a perfectly weighted one. Not sure what he's doing with that little celebration there. But there's a reason he was the cover star in the last episode. He signed a new deal. He's scoring goals galore. Rodrigo Ribeiro has put us in the ascendancy. Though it is a corner kick for Watford. Oh, he's been so good all season. But Inaki Montero has made an absolute shocker. But the referee's going over to the big screen. I'm not sure what the managers are doing on the sideline there. There's a bit of head in hands. He's actually copying me, isn't he? So maybe they've got it spot on. Come on, ref, do us a favour. Stop that Watford manager punch in the air. It's going to be awarded. No, it's disallowed. They're all going back over. Oh, he fooled me. 1-0 it stays to Palace. And I take it back, Montero. You did nothing wrong. You were fouled. Nothing like the goalkeepers getting a bit of protection, is there? Quarter of the game gone. Watford starting to have a few set pieces. This one in again, but Rodolfo deals with it. We've got to be careful because we're allowing them a little bit of pressure and a little bit of territory. As Cox cuts it back on the edge of the box, Malero gets there again. Cross was blocked the first time. Rothwell in again. Only clears to the edge of the box. And a shot from Abansky is just over the bar. We're really clinging on now. Watford having a stronger spell. We're going to praise the lads because they've got the lead, but we need them to push on on the front foot. We've not really had a reaction, but we are getting a little better defensively at times. This game hasn't really been one of them. A half time, no. We might still lead 1 0, although we've got a free kick and a chance to better it. Rothwell releases Ribeiro down the channel. Big switch of play towards Hames. Loads of assists this year. That cross not quite met by Vaknin, but he gets it again. Cutting back from the right to Hurley. He gets down the line. Ball, uh, ball through is poor there, to be fair. Didn't judge the run, and the player had to cut back. And Hurley gets there again. Second chance. Through ball to Ribeiro. Down to Vaknin. Is he onside? I'm not sure. He looked just off to me. Was tight because the defender marking Ribeiro had dropped off. We've had one disallowed, one controversially. That one not so much. 1-0 at the break. Vaknin does not get his goal. Well, here we go. It is 1-0 at half time. It's been a pretty even game. But Watford, they've not been prolific all season. They've lost their best attacking players. They've not replaced them. And our attacking players have found a ruthlessness they've never had before. As Rodriguez throws in from the right. Five gone in the second half. Nice one too with Vaknin. And Hurley finds Rothwell. Don't know what it is. Hurley not rated quite as well as Ward. And not as natural in midfield. But he's having a really good half of the season out there. And whenever he's come on he's done better. And now starting looks a little bit of a gem. As Cox picks it up for Watford. Right to the right hand side. We're getting back to defend here. And he's well dealt with. Nelson picks it up to Rodolfo. Forming a better partnership with Polito in there. He's just a bit better physically, which might be the difference maker. Rothwell with time to run into midfield. Look at Watford's lack of press in there. Vaknin plays Ribeiro into Hames. Cross the goal he goes. Dinks the goalkeeper. And it's 2-0. Rothwell ran 20 yards with not one challenge or one Watford player near him. Picked out the passes. There was no pressure on the ball. And the goalkeeper's being blamed for it. It was a clever finish. But let's be fair. The defending was shocking. 2-0 at the hour mark. We're looking pretty good. We'll think about changes in a few more minutes. It's been a really good display. A professional job done. And as it stands, if we look at the league table, after this free kick, of course, we are in seventh place as Botman down to Ayan. Chance to shoot, but loses it to Rodriguez with a heavy touch. Can play down the line to Ribeiro here. It's a great chance to counter-attack. Just plays it through. It deflects away. And we're not going to make anything of it. But Watford playing out from the back here. They need to get one back if they're to have any chance. Should be playing with freedom having been relegated, but not happening. Polito wins it again from a half arse pass, and Nelson goes back to Rodolfo. We're keeping the ball well, and it's a long highlight. I would expect this to lead to something. Let's hope it's at the other end. A spas off. Good flick on. Ribeiro released down the left, and Vaknin's in the middle. Can he find him? Gets to the byline. Four on one in there. Cuts back to Hurley. Down for spas off. In off the left. Oh, lovely effort. Tip wide by the goalkeeper. It's a cracking move. And that lad is really starting to improve. He's going to have to come off in a minute because he's knackered and he's not had his best game. 
But he really has made a difference this half the year. Rodolfo heads just over and will now make some changes because at right back, Rodriguez is struggling. We'll think about him in a minute. Probably Mitchell on and Nelson switching sides. I'm looking at Spasov on the left of midfield for Zalewski. I'm looking at Vaknin off for Chris Lewis with Ribeiro switching. Maybe the last two will save for now. Rothwell could come off, but he's had an okay game. I'll give it another 10 minutes. We'll leave it at 2-0 and we'll get through to the last 15 or so. 13 minutes remaining now. In swinger this time. Towards that back post. Rodolfo's up. Wins another header. Just over the bar. Ribeiro shattered. He will come off. He'll be replaced by Mancon. Definitely had a good couple of months now. Learned the language. Starting to adapt to the club and get going. And I'm going to bring on Gordon Ward as the playmaker. He's a natural left sider. Does suit the role okay apart from his vision. So I'm hoping that maybe he'll play a bit more confidently with less defensive responsibility and on his natural side as well. There's 10 minutes to go here and we're starting to look very confident as Watford bring the ball forward. We do not want to give away a goal here. Tyrick Mitchell's missed his challenge though and he's out of position. Rodolfo loses out. Tomas shots blocked. And to be fair, I think he was off anyway. The flag goes up. Montero will take the goal kick. What a signing he's proved to be as well. Four minutes of stoppage time fly by. It is a 2-0 win for Crystal Palace. It was a fairly even game, but we were ruthless. And that is what we've been all season. An excellent win. We got an Arsenal on the final day. This is going to be a decisive one. We'll come back in a moment to look at the Premier League table. Of course, head into that deciding match. Well, here we go then. It is the final day of the Premier League season against Arsenal. Tyreek Mitchell picked up a knock in the week. He might be all right for the bench today. But I've got to show you this stat before, which just shows what we've managed to achieve this year. Overall, we are one of three clubs in the division to make a transfer profit this year. Considering we've lost some stars, and I will give Dougie credit, he's brought in very good personalities. We're in great position here. I want to show you the Premier League table though, because at the minute, we are sick. Because Tottenham lost their game in hand, and it was a remarkable one. They played against, where was it? They played on the evening kickoff against Arsenal and lost 4-1 in the North London derby. Now that moved them below us on goal difference. So we are now in a position to get 6th, 7th or 8th today. Now 6th and 7th will guarantee us European football. We basically know that. 8th place is a little bit trickier. We're probably going to get an extra place as a country because of the European coefficient, the new format. But there is a problem with that. The FA Cup final is between 3rd place Liverpool and our rivals, 10th place Brighton. If Brighton win it and we finish 8th, we could lose the European spot. If we finish in the top 7, it will just be whether it's Europa League or Europa Conference. But either way, Guy Vaknin's going to get the golden boot. Ben Hames is going to get the top assists of the season. And this has been a wonderful year. Arsenal are all but secured 4th place in the league. So might not be as big a game for them this but we are going to try our best to be on the front foot, to be aggressive and do our best. They're starting to regenerate that squad. They've still got that mix of players that we're used to seeing in the team. Saka, Erdegaard, both still there and Saliba in defence. Let's go and pick our 11 for today. Should probably be the same in terms of the starting lineup. Mitchell will just make the bench. Campbell as well in place of Kuto. And we're going to leave it at that. It is a very good team. It's been a very good season. And I just want to finish it by doing ourselves proud. This is a chance to show we're ready for the next level. And the next level could be Europe next season. Well, three changes for Arsenal. They've brought in a backup goalkeeper today, which is probably just a goodwill gesture. But otherwise, they've brought off to Debo, another younger player coming in for a more experienced one. If we get through the dressing room, give the fans the send-off. There's confidence, there's motivation in the dressing room. We've got to have a look, though, as well, at who our rivals are playing today. Because we need to keep a close eye on both the Tottenham and the Newcastle results. So we'll get the league table up as well. Tottenham are at home to Watford. That should be a banker. Who have Newcastle got? They're away at Leeds. That's a trickier game. But Leeds have got nothing to play for other than one position up. So it doesn't look like that's going to be the hardest game in the world for them. Arsenal have put a free kick over the bar. It's been an average start in this one. But the visitors are starting to get on top. It's to the back post to Rodolfo who heads clear. In comes one of the changes for Arsenal. Gets into the box. Spasov's beaten. Crosses it in. It deflects to Palermo who scores. I think we're going to have to drop to balance because we're getting absolutely roasted here. And maybe we just need to drop that line a bit. But Tottenham have now got the lead. That is one team above us. Newcastle though have just gone down to 10 men. 
And if that stops them from winning, that guarantees a seventh on goal difference. And I think with it, European football, as Rothwell crosses to Hurley, and that will do even more to secure it. Owen Hurley has just scored his first goal for the club. A player that Dougie plucked out of the championship on deadline day. He's hungry, he's athletic, and he's come in and played Luigi Castro's role really well. So he takes credit, he scores his first goal, and now we have got a real opportunity. As here come Arsenal down the left again. They've looked really good today, in fairness. Chance to cross from the byline. Nicked by Hurley there. He's doing really well defensively too. Releases Guy Vaknin on the counter. Back to Haynes, the right winger. Into Hurley. Through to Vaknin. Good counter-attacking football, but they nick it at the back. And here comes Erdegaard. Through to Anana. Has support from Palermo, the goal scorer. Good ball in. Rodolfo half clears. Palermo again. Back to Taram. Pressure from Arsenal here. Chance to shoot. Oh, it's a gorgeous ball. Palermo misses his shot. He had to score that one. But that pass from Taram is glorious. It's going to be 1-1 at half time. We are seventh as it stands. And European football is on the way. It's been some effort. Leeds Newcastle still 0-0. And Newcastle down to 10. And Tottenham we know are going to win. So unless we do the same, we're probably not going to be able to compete. And even then on goal difference, they'll probably overtake us. As Pintado breaks for Arsenal to Erdegaard. Big ball forward towards them. Montero heads away. Rothwell will go up and he gets it down for Nelson. He brings it forward at left back to Spasov. Good sign in his bin as well. Big ball forward to Vaknin. In one on one. Dinks the keeper. Guy Vaknin. If he wasn't assured at a golden boot before, he's got his 32nd league goal of the season. What a turnaround. How many of you in the comments last summer said he was done at the club? He's just not that good. Look at him now. He just needed confidence. And he's about to have a penalty as well. Hurley is having the game of his life. What a performance from that boy. He's going to get a penalty kick here. And it's going to be taken by Guy Vaknin. It's a chance to make it 3-1. It is a dream start to the second half. And Hurley and Vaknin are doing the damage on Arsenal. Can he put the penalty away? You bet he can. Sends the keeper the wrong way for Premier League goal number 33. And the only problem I have with this is I know that Dougie's now going to sell him for a ridiculously low price. We have got to get out before that happens. As Spurs go 3-0 up, but at the moment, we are edging them by two on goal difference. As Ribeiro gets the cross in, Haynes is up at the back post, back to Vaknin, the flex and the goalkeeper keeps it out. Gekta clears it downfield to Saka, the skipper, and he breaks away now to Solly Arson, who's been very good in this game. He gets down the right this time, towards the byline, chance to cross. Cuts in really well. Has loads of space. Where's the defence gone? Oh, that's unlucky. Polito sticks a leg out to block the shot. It was going wide by a mile. It comes off him. Goes into the roof of the net. And it's 3-2. The goal difference is separated by one. And Tottenham have scored again. We're down to seventh place. Not a disaster, but it's not ideal. The biggest problem, though, is that Newcastle have scored. They've gone one up with 10 men at Leeds United. If they manage to get the win... We are going to have to hold on here because if we draw, we drop back down to eighth place. So with that in mind, let's make some changes. Jimmy Campbell will replace Spassoff, who's tired. Ribeiro will be off for Chris Lewis. And at right back, Rodriguez hasn't played well, but Mitchell's not really fit enough to come on. So I'm going to leave it at those two for now. We'll give it five more before any more changes. I really need a Leeds goal. 89th minute. Eric Nelson will come off for Mitchell. I'm also going to bring off Rothwell on the yellow card for Ward. A bit more defensive minded. And I'll save the last one for another minute's time. Just to waste a few seconds. It's 3-2 as Polito's got a free kick. Tries to make amends for his own goal. But it's not there and Palermo can break now. Look at Arsenal go. How many men have they committed forward here? Curd down the left. They've got free in support. Big ball across. Montero does well. Wasn't that well directed the cross. But he really dealt with it. Newcastle still one up. We have got to hold on for seventh. There are two minutes of stoppage time to go. Haynes is absolutely exhausted. We've got a struggling right back. I don't know who to take off. I think I'm going to go maybe for Haynes off for Zalewski. I think that might be the best sub at this point. Let's just do that on the right hand side. For two minutes is absolutely fine. And if we hold on here, European football, the miracle is achieved. What a result. Hurley and Vaknin take a bow for that performance. A really good display against Arsenal. We are showing the mentality in this squad. It's a great display. We'll get through to the season review. I don't think we'll get the European confirmation today because of the FA Cup. 
But either way, we're going to milk this. It has been a brilliant season on the pitch. We'll look at this very quickly. Guy Vaknin, 33 goals, wins Footballer of the Year, Players Player of the Year, top goal scorer in the Premier League. Ben Haynes wins Young Player of the Year, 18 assists in 33 appearances. What an effort from that young man. And now Crystal Palace Players in Team of the Year. Of course, it's Super Guy Vaknin. Well, one thing never changes. The Crystal Palace board will not put their hands in their pockets. Despite getting the inflated prize money for finishing 7th, Despite European football being all but secured, 33 million is the transfer budget. It's not competitive for Premier League level, and it's not enough for me. So we might have to go on the job hunt again, but for now, we'll try and get to the season review. Well, it's a miracle. We've actually had the end of season review at the right time here. So let's go and look through the new arrivals, because this summer brought a lot of controversy when it came to the transfer window. If we remind ourselves, the mighty Dougie Friedman sold first choice keeper Jankovic, first choice right winger Gruznov. He sold Traore for 20 million. He sold Esnault for 58, the big star player at the club. He also sold the likes of Clemenson, Mustafa, Castro in January, and Chris Richards to a rival club. In the end, he got it all right because the transfers in were the right personalities. Ben Hames, sensational. Hurley in January, a clever deal. Spasov improved as the year went on. Montero was rock solid at the back and even the others have all contributed in their way so a really good summer from Dougie albeit maybe not the most long-term planning not the most foresight you've got to give him credit for what he did the season results leave us in seventh place no confirmation yet but that is awaiting the outcome of the coefficient table and Brighton versus Liverpool in the FA Cup final the moments to remember a biggest win against Wolves by five goals to nil was brilliant we obviously had a 5-1 against Burnley, didn't we, not long after on camera. And a match to remember, a 4-0 against Watford. Guy Vaknin really came to the party that day. He also scored goal of the season against Everton. But let's go and get through to the finances. The reputation stays the same. Guy Vaknin shirts are selling in their droves. The sponsorship up slightly, the prize money up massively, and everything else pretty similar. How did we line up? What's the best 11? The front two, I can't argue with. The midfield four, Castro still in there. I probably can't disagree with that. And at the back, Polito is picked over, taps over. But overall, a really good season. We go through to the accolades. Vaknin and Hames basically share the awards between them. And it's a shame for Ribeiro because he played really well this year. He's just been outshone by two others. It's an overall goals and assists record for the two big men. It's a record transfer fee for Hugo Esnault. And it's a really good season. We are going to have European football next year. We're just waiting to find out which competition it is. The club vision is expecting mid-table next year. We've raised the expectation level of this football club again. The dynamics are looking pretty excellent. And the plan for next season is just to do well. The European football is on the horizon. I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Should we stay or should we go? Chelsea is potentially coming up again. It's there virtually every six months at the minute. But it is a volatile job to take. And although there's not any other massive ones at the minute, you'd expect three or four throughout the summer. So get me your thoughts on that down in the comments. Do I stick with it? Do I lead Palace into Europe for the first time? Do I stick with it if it's the Conference League? Because it may be a chance to win a European trophy. Let me know all of that down in the comments. How many of this lot get sold? We've only just reached the end of the season. Haynes is wanted. Vaknin is wanted. And Jorge Rodriguez as well. It could be a very painful summer if we stay. If you want to stay up to date and find out if we do have a painful summer and whether we're still here on the first day of next season, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back in two days time to find out as the new season starts in the head coach. And in the meantime, we've got some pretty big events in the other save. Our Build a Nation story with Distillery. We'll see our Champions League qualifying debut and our start to the new season tomorrow. We had our 10-year bookmark and season review yesterday. There was some big personal news in that too. You can find it in the eye above. There's also links up there to the football podcast with the lovely clips from Saturday's game, the Twitch channel and the blog story as well. Thank you for watching as always, for following this magical season. We have finished 7th in the Premier League. We wait to see which European competition we're in. I'll see you next time to find out.